What's up guys, this is Jay from COI. Uh, so this weekend, me and my family were watching holiday movies. And uh, The Little Match Girl came on. It was uh, It's an interesting movie story. It's been told many times in many different ways. Um, its origins, I believe, are uh, a musical, um, an orchestral number back in like the 1800s. But anyway, in the story... A uh, little girl is trying to sell matchsticks. It's the dead of winter. Um, she's freezing. She's trying to sell these matchsticks. She doesn't have a lot of them. You can tell she's obviously poor and homeless. And uh, no one's buying them. Because, you know, sometimes capitalism doesn't work. And finally, as the night gets colder and darker, she retreats to an alley where she's trying to take some warmth in. And she lights a matchstick to try to keep warm. And every time she lights one, she starts hallucinating and seeing visions of comfort and joy. And uh, namely because she's slipping away. She's fading away from life. And on the last, last matchstick, um, this big hallucination happens where she goes to a warm house with wonderful food. And she sees her mother or her grandma. I'm not really sure which one. And they pan back to her. And it shows her dead body. With her spirit being taken, I guess, into heaven or wherever they want to say. And uh, that's the end. So, needless to say, my seven-year-old was, was quite shaken by this. And he had a lot of questions. And uh, the first one was, is this still a problem? Does this still happen? And uh, you want to be gentle when you're talking to your child about this kind of thing. And But yeah, I also don't want to lie to him, you know. So I told him, yeah, yeah, it, it still happens. Uh, it, it happens far more than it should. And uh, he had the idea that uh, we should give to homeless shelters far more than we do. I... Already, since he's, I'd say, about three to four years now, I've taken him up to the homeless shelter uh, every few, uh, I want to say weeks, but honestly, it's probably months. I wish it was more. But uh, we go, we donate our time, we donate food, uh, diapers, things like that. And uh, he said, well, we should go there. In fact, he wanted to go there that night. I told him I couldn't. It's closed. But... He said, you know, and mind you, this is a seven-year-old, and he says, you know, there's not really a lot of good video games coming out this year. There's no good consoles. There's no good electronics and really no good toys. Why don't you only give me one or two Christmas presents this year and give the rest of the money to the homeless shelter? And uh, I don't think I've ever been prouder that he was my child. Uh, that means I'm doing a good job. And uh, I said, yeah, I agree. And in fact, he told me, he said, why don't you, on your next radio show, why don't you try to tell people that they should think about doing that too? And so I, I, I definitely, because I agree with him. And let's be honest, people. Best new game that's been out this year so far is what the the new Je Jedi game, the new Star Wars game. Eh, it's all right. Maybe you could argue Luigi's Mansion, but even that's pretty old. These games have really been, you know, today a, a buy, a must buy. And yeah, we we don't have the PlayStation Five till next year. It's no new iPhone. There's really not a lot on the docket to buy. So you might as well take that extra money. Instead of buying garbage just for the purpose of buying it, you might as well take that extra money and give to your local homeless shelter. Um, but I got to thinking, there's probably a lot of people who are going to do that. So what you should do is save that money, put a note in your phone, and then give that money in late January, in February. Maybe... Cut that even in half, what you're going to give. But make a note. Every three months, bring food to the homeless shelter. Donate some money if you don't have, if you don't want to do the shopping and all that stuff. 
if nothing else, try at least around January slash February and around October, November. Because a lot of people are going to be there for Christmas. A lot of people. There's a, there's a lot of guilty people. Um, which it shouldn't be. It's really not their fault. But that's when we think about it. It's this time of year. We should really be thinking about it different time of the year. Uh, we continued to talk about it. And it was funny because we went to um, a family's house. You know, kind of a Christmas get together. And my son was talking about this movie. And my uncle, he kind of piped up. And he said, oh, is that that propaganda movie? And I, I assumed he was talking about the fact that the version we saw was Russian. And I thought he was talking about, like, Russian propaganda, communism, all that, blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, I said, yeah, um, but I wouldn't say it's propaganda because it, it was originated in the 1800s. It's way before the Red Scare and all that. And he said, oh, no, no, it's the whole thing. It's an attack on, con on capitalism because that doesn't happen with capitalism. I didn't reply because it's a Christmas party. But I thought, oh my God, <laughs> this old man doesn't believe homeless people die every day and all around the world, especially in America, because we got capitalism. He's put the blinders on so tight that he doesn't understand that children die every day for the mere act of being homeless in America. It's really crazy. And look, one thing I do want to say. Donating your money and your time is fantastic. But it's not going to solve the problem. It's a band-aid. And it's a band-aid that we, we must apply with care and routinely. But only until we can get a politician who really cares about income inequality i'm telling you who to vote for for me i believe it's bernie sanders he's been consistent on that since the 60s and the only politician i can think of who puts that as his number one platform you could argue medicare for for all but that's in line with it because remember most people are only about a 700 hundred dollar bill away from being homeless um so I think that's part of his big movement to try to curb a lot of homeless, to help with the income inequality. But it is a huge problem, especially here in America, that we have to tackle and be aware of. And we need to start voting populism. Doesn't matter how you feel about Trump or Clinton or any of those people. Think about how they feel for you. And what they want to do for you. None of them even have policies. Let alone have told you exactly how they're going to help you. But again, I'm not trying to, to tell you who to vote for. I will always, at least for the time being, I will back Bernie Sanders. Uh, I have for the last, I don't know, over a decade now. Ever since I really discovered who he was. Um, I've been a big fan of his. So um, we do have to think about that's the only way that we can change this. It's nice to donate money and it makes you feel good. But in a couple months, when maybe you don't have as much money, there's still going to be people dying. And the only way we're going to fix that is to find problem solvers. People who want to cut down on Jeff Bezos making billions of dollars and not paying a cent in taxes. And, uh, you know, if someone like Andrew Yang is correct, we might all be homeless very soon. So there's a lot of things to think about. Automation is going to destroy manufacturing and retail jobs. Um, we need a revolution. We need to make sure that in 200 years, people aren't writing a musical about us dying on the side of the road. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. Have a great evening. Take care.